Hi Tmits from My Life Mits, thank you so much for being here. Today I want to unbox this with you and I'm just going to go right into it. Alright, so as you can see with the packaging, it's an Opus 88. This is my first ever Opus 88 fountain pen and I haven't seen this particular one on YouTube. There are a couple of videos, but uh, yeah, I wanted to share with you my first impression and first reaction to opening this up because I think it's going to be quite grand. <laughs> All right, so it comes in a nice little sleeve and this uh, very sturdy box. And let's take a look here. Oh my! <laughs> so there's the instruction sheet uh, with the eyedropper pen set. I think hopefully there's an English, yes there's an English slide there so that I will definitely take a look at it prior to inking it up. And so here it is, it's the Opus 88 Flora and oh my goodness it's very big but it's so pretty. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get a close-up. So I don't know if it's really showcasing on camera, but I feel like there's like so much depth to these colors. It's not just, um, it doesn't seem like the colors are just colored on top. There seems to be several layers of colors and it's just really, really pretty to look at. So this is supposed to be a the shape of a vase. So you can see the little lip over here at the top and then on the bottom as well. and. You can actually stand it upright if you like to store it that way. Uh, so let's take a look at the inside. So I chose a F nib or like a fine nib and that's what the nib looks like. It has Opus and then 88 there and then the letter F on the bottom. It's very, very nice in the hand. It feels extremely sturdy, and um, but it's not too heavy where I, I think I would get too tired writing because my hands are not that big. I will do a couple of comparisons, side-by-side -side comparisons later, and I will also ink it up as well. I've already kind of um, pre-selected a color choice, so uh, I think that's the color that I will go with. So this is an eyedropper system fountain pen. So it's my first ever. I just wanted to make sure I read the instructions properly. Um, so you just kind of unscrew this here. There is an O-ring which will protect the ink from actually leaking out. Um, and then you can use, I usually use a syringe to put my ink in anyways, uh, but it does come with the little eyedropper as well if you want uh, to use that to fill this in. And I'm not sure what the ink capacity is. I have to look into that. But so here on the bottom, you can see that uh, you can twist it out to let some air in when you are writing. Uh, but it's so seamless. Like there's no. Um, that's, I, I feel like it's so pretty. Uh, the far the fact that you don't see any like you know big harsh lines. Uh, it's very very nice. And even when you twist this on here. I feel like this is quite nice and secure. Um, I think some people might apply uh, silicone grease on the threads if you are um, not very confident about, you know, if you're afraid that the ink is going to leak, you might apply some silicone grease there, but I think I'm gonna just leave it as is. I'm just gonna uh, try a couple of drops in there. Uh, but even though it is quite big, I feel that it's, it feels very comfortable um, and this is just so pretty it is so so pretty 
and I also like the fact that when you put the cap on it is once again very like seamless and you can kind of see the line of course because uh, it is a couple of pieces but but this nice like seamless look is really appealing uh, it's very pretty so let's ink it up and see how it writes and see if it's comfortable I when I was looking for reviews on YouTube I originally thought that this section here would bother me because you can see there it's quite the um, jump from here to here but it's I don't really touch it it doesn't bo bother me at all um, this is not too wide as well it's very very comfortable it's not too heavy either and yeah I thought I would be bothered by this um, different different um, sizing and how it jumps from really big to small but it's it doesn't I don't really touch it it kind of touches here but it you know it's we'll have to see I'll have to try it out and see how that fits uh, while I'm writing actually writing so let's ink it up all right so let's get started I ha like I said I've decided to use this ink right here this is the Tatya Takya powder blue and it looks very pretty it's in like a nice baby blue type of uh, ink and so I have the bottle here thank you Diana for this beautiful sample and I like I said I usually use a syringe but I'm going to use the eyedropper just so that I can share with you how that works this is going to be the first time for me as well so I'm just going to follow the instructions take off the cap um, unscrew it get some ink and then pop it back in so I'm going to follow the instructions as is I've already taken off the cap I I believe the best practice is to actually um, rinse it first just because sometimes there's residue that remains on the nib during the manufacturing process but I'm just gonna go for it and I'm not I I wish that there was some kind of indicator of like how many mls or um, but there isn't so I'm just gonna eyeball it I'm not a huge writer so I know I'm not going to need a lot of ink just going to that's what it looks like there Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of ink. Uh, actually, maybe not too bad. Okay, so let's put that in there. I haven't um, touched this part at all. It says to ink up the, the barrel first and then twist the knob. So I'm going to follow the instruction as is. So this is what it looks like inside. And I'm just going to go for it. It looks like I got, a, I got a lot of air bubbles, so maybe that wasn't a lot of ink. Let's see if this works with just this much. So I, so now it's in, um, and then it says here to twist the grip uh, of the barrel section into tight, and then release the bottom tail slightly. So let's see. So this bottom tail here, I'm just going to open that up a little bit. And I, if I understand correctly, that lets the air in and helps with the flow. I'm not sure how long it takes for the ink. And I assume if you have a lot more ink, it helps with the gravity, of course. But uh, I might need to put a little bit more in. That Maybe that wasn't enough. So I don't see any ink. Let's try that again. Let's try getting another bit of ink. I don't think that was a lot. I probably got a lot of air bubbles, to be honest. Let's try that again. Just be careful. There is ink in there, so I need to be careful. You can see there. Oh, it looks like it's working. All right, so that did the trick. I wanted to show you the ink color and see how it writes. 
Uh, let me clean this up here so that I can share with you my notebook. I'm gonna, oh, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. Um, just to let you know, there is no area for a clip, um, but there it is. So let's clean this up here. So I have a couple of notebooks in here, or three notebooks. I have the Tomoe River paper, the Cosmo Airlight, and the uh, Pale Veil one. This one here, I was kind of documenting my, the, what is it called, the 30 inks, 30 days. If I have the video up, I will uh, leave the link down below. Um, but so let's do a little scratch on here with that. This one here is the Cosmo Air Light notebook uh, from Yamamoto Paper. Sorry, I'm going to do uh, right over here. I feel like this is quite far away, but the uh, angle. <laughs> it's very smooth and comfortable. I was actually quite worried that you know, because it's such a big pen that it would be troublesome uh, to hold on to or I thought maybe it would get quite slippery but I don't feel like that's the case at all it's it's quite nice it's not heavy at all it might be a little bit different if I were to include a lot more inks and things inside that didn't turn out as as what I, I was um, hoping to draw this little Zen tangle that I recently discovered uh, let me show you here I was hoping to draw this one here that I recently discovered but it didn't turn out uh, very well. I just wanted to share with you the ink uh, in the Yamamoto Papers uh, Cosmo Airlight, but it's very smooth. But like I said, I was quite worried because my hands are not very big and I just thought it would be quite uh, difficult to write, but it's not at all the case. And it's so pretty as well. I'm glad that I went with the fine nib. I was going to go for something more fun maybe like a broad or a stub nib, uh, but I'm, I'm glad that I went with a fine because I'm most comfortable with fine at this time. Uh, so this is the Cosmo Air Light here, and then I will try some on Tomoe River paper. This is just regular uh, Tomoe River notebook here. That's what it looks like on my River paper. I'm going to do a bit of uh, close-ups at the end of the video. So that you can but overall, I'm very, very impressed, very happy with this purchase here. It's a beautiful pen. I, I like this pop of color at the top as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. So this is just the height comparison. It's a little bit difficult to see, uh, but I guess the closest one in regards to fountain pens would be this Twisby Diamond 580. I thought it would be nice to put these ones alongside as well. I use these often uh, pencil and just a regular fine liner. The smaller pens, the Pilot Kakuno and the Pilot Prera is what I use frequently as well. Um, beside the, this one is a Platinum Plazier. Um, 
so that's what it looks like height wise I mean there are dimensions online uh, but this is what it looks like holding it so that's what it looks like in my hand I know it seems quite ridiculous it looks quite uh, big and bulky uh, but once you take off the cap like I said it's quite comfortable I haven't done any long writing sessions so I'm gonna have to maybe uh, come back and do like share with you my thoughts regarding that but um, yeah that's the comparison maybe I will do one of these things here so I can share with you so I'm trying to hold the camera with my left hand <laughs> so that's what it looks like there with the Twisby um, it's not really accurate because I'm just comparing the cap and not so much the dimensions of where the grip is so let me take off the caps and I'll come back so you can see that that's the comparison uh, between the Opus and the Diamond 580 let's see if this view would be better here